David Hume was a Scottish philosopher who lived from 1711 to 1776. Hume was a naturalist who sought to use empirical methods to develop a science of man. In his work, An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding, Hume defends a view about free will that is called compatibilism. According to compatibilists, it's possible to have free will and moral responsibility even if our actions are determined. In other words, he believed that free will is compatible with determinism. Determinism is the view that every event is necessitated by past events. Some event A necessitates another event B just in case it's necessary that if A occurs, then B occurs. Events are just things that happen. When I blink my eyes, that's an event. When I raise my hand, that's an event. When I take a drink of water, that's an event too. When a neuron fires, that's another event. When an ice cube melts, that's an event. And so on for everything that happens, literally everything. There are millions, billions, trillions of events happening right now, every second, minute, and hour. Hume thinks that our actions are events, no different than events that occur in nature, like avalanches, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, erosion, photosynthesis, and tidal flow, just to name a few. He also thinks that all events are caused. He says, it's universally allowed that nothing exists without a cause of its existence. Finally, Hume thinks that all causes necessitate their effects. This is just part of what causation means, according to Hume. In light of this, Hume concludes that our actions, like other events that occur in nature, are necessary consequences of whatever causes them. In fact, Hume thinks that we already take this fact for granted. He says, necessity has universally, though tacitly, in the schools, in the pulpit, and in common life, been allowed to belong to the will of man. What Hume is saying here is that we take the necessity of human actions for granted whenever we predict and explain human actions. He continues, no one has ever pretended to deny that we can draw inferences concerning human actions and that those inferences are founded on the experienced union of like actions with like motives, inclinations, and circumstances. In other words, he thinks that everyone already agrees that human behavior obeys certain regularities, because this is what enables us to reason about human behavior on a day-to-day -day basis. To understand what Hume is saying here, think about how you can predict and explain your friend's actions based on their character traits, what kinds of things they've done in the past, and what you know about their situation and human motivation more generally. You might predict that Lucy will flake on plans this weekend because you know that she has a math test on Monday, that she cares a lot about doing well in school, and that she often cancels plans at the last minute when she's studying for a test. Hume's point is that we observe these regularities in human behavior precisely because one, actions are events, two, all events are caused, and three, all causes necessitate their effects. So according to Hume, determinism is true and therefore every human action is determined. Of course, Hume allows that you might be wrong about your predictions. People can behave differently than you'd expect, but this happens only because you are ignorant of some of the causes of their behavior. Human beings can be unpredictable because they are complex organisms embedded in complex social environments, but this doesn't imply that their actions aren't causally necessitated. Given this, why does Hume think that we can nonetheless have free will? It comes down to how Hume defines liberty, which is synonymous with free will in this context. He says that by liberty, we mean a power of acting or not acting according to the determination of the will. In other words, free will is the ability to perform actions or not on the basis of our desires and motivations. Hume and other philosophers of his era believed that the mind and brain was divided into sections or faculties and that each section was responsible for certain tasks. They called the faculty responsible for causing our actions the will. These early modern philosophers were on the right track. The brain can be divided into regions, 
and we now know that the motor cortex is the region of the brain involved in the planning, control, and execution of voluntary movements. Hume believes that we are free when our actions are caused by our will. If our actions are caused by our will, then if we choose to remain at rest, we may, and if we choose to move, we also may. Thus for Hume, we have freedom of will or liberty when we can do what we want to do. That is when we have freedom of action. So for example, if I desire to eat some ice cream and this desire causes me to eat some ice cream, then my action, eating the ice cream, is free. Individuals are robbed of their free will or liberty, according to Hume, when they are prevented from doing what they want to do because, for example, they're imprisoned, oppressed, coerced, or otherwise controlled by forces external to them. So if I desire to eat some ice cream, but I can't buy any ice cream because it's illegal for philosophy professors to buy ice cream, then I'm not free to eat ice cream. Thus, Hume argues that an agent's action can be free and determined if the action is necessitated by the agent's desires and motives.